data types. In this topic, we'll delve into the exciting world of variables and data types in Python. Think of variables as containers that hold data or information you want to use in your program. Data types, on the other hand, describe the kind of data a variable holds. It's like telling Python, hey, this is a text, or this is a number. Ready? Let's code. In the code above, we created three variables. Name is a string, text data, because it's enclosed in quotes, and we assigned it the value Alex. Age is an integer, whole number, because we assigned it the value 21 without any quotes. Is student is a boolean, true false value, since it holds the value true. Then we use the print function to display the values of our variables. Here, Python automatically knows the data type of each variable based on the value we assign to it. This demonstrates how variables can hold different types of data and how easy it is to display these data using Python. Basic operators. Operators in Python are special symbols that perform arithmetic or logical computation. The value that the operator operates on is called the operand. Let's dive into some basic arithmetic operators. Addition, subtraction, and multiplication, division slash, and modulo percent, which finds the remainder of a division. In the provided code snippet, we first declare two variables a and b with values 10 and 3, respectively. Using basic arithmetic operators, we perform the following operations. Addition, c equals a plus b, results in 13. Subtraction, d equals a minus b, gives 7. Multiplication, e equal a b, yields 30. Division, f equals a's y b, results in approximately 3.33 since Python's division operator returns a float, and modulo g equals a percent b finds the remainder of the division, which is 1. The print statement at the end displays all the results, showing how each operator works. Input and output. Input and output operations are essential as they allow a program to interact with the outside world. Inputs are the data that the program receives from the user or another source, while outputs are the data that the program sends out to the user or another destination. Python provides built-in functions for handling these operations, making it easy to get data into your program and then do something interesting with it. In the provided code example, we use the input function to prompt the user for their name and store it in a variable named username. When the user types their name and presses enter, that value gets stored in username. The print function is then used to output a personalized greeting, incorporating the user's name. The f before the string in the print function indicates that it's an f string, allowing us to insert variables directly into the string, making it a powerful tool for creating dynamic outputs. Control structures if else elif. Control structures guide the flow of your program. They allow you to make decisions, execute certain blocks of code under specific conditions, and create branching paths for different situations. The if, else, and elif statements in Python are fundamental in adding logic to your code. In this snippet, we declare a variable age and set it to 18. We first check if age is less than 18 with an if statement. This would print, you are a minor, if true. Since it's not, we proceed to the elif, which means else if. Checking if age is exactly 18, which is true, so it prints congratulations on becoming an adult. If neither condition were true, the else statement would execute, printing, you are an adult. This demonstrates how conditional logic can branch out based on different conditions, allowing for varied responses. Loops for while. Loops in Python are used to execute a block of code repeatedly. There are two main types of loops, for and while. For loops are used for iterating over a sequence like a list, tuple, dictionary set, or string, or other iterable objects. While loops are executed as long as a condition is true. In the for loop example, range 5 generates a sequence of numbers from 0 to 4, and for each iteration it prints the current number i. This loop will print numbers 0 to 4. In the while loop example, the code starts with x equal 5, and prints x as long as x is greater than 0. After printing, it decreases x by 1 using x minus equals 1. This loop will print numbers from 5 to 1, decrementing until x is no longer greater than 0. Functions and recursion. In this part, we'll dive into functions and recursion. Functions are reusable pieces of code that perform a specific task. They help in breaking down complex problems into simpler, manageable parts. 
Recursion, on the other hand, is a technique where a function calls itself to solve a problem. It's particularly useful for tasks that can be divided into similar subtasks. Here, we have a function called factorial, which computes the factorial of a number using recursion. If the number n is 0, it returns 1 since the factorial of 0 is 1. Otherwise, it returns n multiplied by a recursive call to itself with n minus 1. This process repeats until n reaches 0. The print factorial 5 statement calls the factorial function with 5 as an argument, which returns 120. Error handling, try except. When writing code, we often encounter situations where something might go wrong, like trying to open a file that doesn't exist, or dividing a number by zero. In Python, we use the try and accept statements to handle these potential errors without crashing our program. This feature allows our code to gracefully deal with unexpected situations. In this code, we use a try block to test a block of code for errors, like converting an input to an integer or dividing by it. If an error occurs, the code inside the try block stops and the accept block runs. The first accept catches value error, which occurs if the input isn't a number. The second accept catches zero division error, which happens if the number is zero. If there are no errors, the else block runs, printing the result. This structure helps manage errors and provide user-friendly feedback. Lists and tuples. In Python, both lists and tuples are used to store collections of items. Lists are mutable, meaning their content can be changed. Tuples, however, are immutable. Once created, their content cannot be altered. This makes tuples a safer choice for constant data, while lists are more flexible for data that evolves. In this code snippet, sample list is defined as a list containing a mix of integers, strings, and floats. The list is then modified by changing its first element, index 0, from 1 to 2, showcasing its mutable nature. Sample tuple is defined similarly, but as a tuple. Attempting to change the first element of the tuple is shown as a commented outline, which would raise an error if executed, illustrating the immutable nature of tuples. These behaviors underline the key difference between lists and tuples in Python, mutability versus immutability. Dictionaries and sets. Dictionaries and sets in Python are powerful data structures for storing and managing data. Dictionaries allow you to store key value pairs, making data retrieval fast and easy. Sets, on the other hand, are collections of unique elements, helpful in performing mathematical set operations. The code snippet introduces two data structures, a dictionary, and a set. In the dictionary named myDict, we store fruits as keys with their respective quantities as values. Accessing a value is straightforward. For example, myDict apple retrieves the value associated with apple. Moving on to sets, my set is defined with unique numbers. We can easily check membership, e.g., 3 in my set, which returns true if 3 is in the set. Both structures showcase efficient ways to organize data with simple syntax and operations. String manipulation. String manipulation is like having a Swiss army knife for dealing with text in Python. You can cut, combine, or modify strings in countless ways. It's vital for processing user input, data from files, or any time you work with text. Let's dive into some basic operations to handle strings effectively. In this snippet, we're exploring three useful string methods. Upper converts the entire string to uppercase, so hello world becomes hello world. The lower method does the opposite, making all characters lowercase, hello world. Lastly, replace is used to substitute a substring within the string, hello python. These methods are non-destructive. They return a new string without altering the original. File I.O. Reading and writing files. File input output I.O. is how programs read data from and write data to files outside of the program itself. This is essential for things like saving user data, storing configuration settings, or logging information for debugging. Let's simplify this concept with an easy-to-understand example. Creating, writing to, and reading from a file. In this code, we first open or create, if it doesn't exist, a file named example.txt in write w mode. This allows us to write a string to the file. After closing the file, we reopen it in read r mode to read the content. We use the with open context manager for both operations, which ensures the file is properly closed after its block of code is executed. The write method writes a string to the file 
and the read method reads the contents into a variable named content, which is then printed. This example demonstrates the basic pattern of writing to and reading from files in Python. Understanding modules and packages. In Python, modules are like toolboxes. Imagine you have a toolbox for fixing a bike, another for painting walls, and so on. In programming, instead of screwdrivers and paintbrushes, we have functions and classes. Occasionally, we group modules together for a bigger project, and these collections are called packages. Think of a package as your entire toolshed, where every toolbox module has its place. In this code snippet, import math tells Python, hey, I need the toolbox labeled math. The math module contains all sorts of handy tools, functions for mathematical operations. When we call math.s16, we're using the squirt fuss squirt a function from our math toolbox to calculate the square root of 16. It's like saying, in the math toolbox, please find the tool that calculates square roots and use it to find the square root of 16. The output of this operation is 4.0, the square root of 16. Importing standard libraries, math, date time, etc. In Python, standard libraries like math for mathematical functions, date time for dealing with dates and times, provide a wide range of functionalities that can be used without needing to write them from scratch. Importing these libraries is straightforward and enhances the capabilities of your code substantially with minimal effort. In the code, we first import the math library, which gives us access to mathematical constants and functions. We calculate the area of a circle with the radius of 5 using math.pi for pi value and raising the radius to the power of 2. Then, we import the datetime library, which allows us to work with dates and times. We retrieve the current date and time using datetime.datetime.now and store it in current time. This showcases how to leverage the math and datetime libraries to perform common mathematical operations and handle datetime values in Python. Object-Oriented Programming Object-Oriented Programming OOP is a programming paradigm that uses objects to design applications and computer programs. It utilizes several techniques from previously established paradigms, including modularity, polymorphism, and encapsulation. Today we'll explore how to define a class, which is essentially a blueprint for creating objects instances, and add attributes and methods to it. In the provided code, we first define a class called animal. The score init method is a special method that runs as soon as an object of a class is instantiated, i.e., created. The self keyword is a reference to the current instance of the class and is used to access variables and methods attached to the current object. We define two attributes, name and species, and one method, make sound, within the animal class. Finally, we create an instance of the animal class named dog with rover as its name and dog as its species, and we call its make sound method with the argument woof. Essentially, we're modeling a simplistic version of an animal and demonstrating how it can have properties and behaviors. Classes and objects. In Python, classes enable us to define the blueprint of data structures that can hold both data and functions related to that data. We refer to these blueprints as classes and the instances created from these classes as objects. Classes help in organizing and managing data by combining related properties and behaviors into one single unit. In this code snippet, we define a class named dog with an core init method, which is called a constructor in many OOP languages. This constructor initializes the new objects of the class with two basic attributes, name and age. The bark method enables any instance of the dog class to perform an action, in this case, printing a message to the console. When we create an instance of the dog class d equals dog rex 5, we are creating an object. By calling d.bark, we utilize the bark method of the dog object to make rex say woof. Inheritance and polymorphism. Inheritance allows us to define a class that inherits all the methods and properties from another class. The class that is inherited from is called the parent class, and the class that inherits is called the child class. Polymorphism gives us a way to use a class exactly like its parent, so there's no confusion with mixing types. But each child class keeps its own methods as they are. In the given code, we define a parent class animal with a method speak that returns a generic sound. We then create two child classes, dog and cat, which inherit from animal. 
Each child class overrides the speak method to return a specific sound. This demonstrates inheritance, where dog and cat inherit from animal, and polymorphism, where the same method named speak behaves differently depending on the object instance, animal, dog, or cat. Exceptional handling in depth. Exception handling in Python is a mechanism that allows us to deal with unforeseen errors in our code. It lets our programs continue running even when unexpected situations, often called exceptions, occur. Understanding how to manage these exceptions is crucial for building robust and resilient applications. Let's dive into the try except block, which is at the heart of exception handling. In this code, we attempt to divide 10 by 0, which would normally cause a crash due to a division by 0 error. The try block contains the risky code that might raise an exception. When an exception occurs, the code inside the except block executes, here printing you cannot divide by zero. The else block is optional and only runs if the try block does not raise an exception, indicating a successful operation. Finally, the finally block is executed regardless of whether an exception occurred or not, making it useful for cleanup activities such as closing files or releasing resources. Working with APIs. Working with APIs, application programming interfaces in Python allows you to leverage the power of web services and obtain data dynamically. An API is a set of rules that enables programs to communicate with each other. In Python, the requests library is commonly used for making HTTP requests to APIs. We will explore how to make a simple GET request to fetch data from an API and parse the response. In this code snippet, we first import the requests library, which is essential for making HTTP requests. Then, we use the get method to make a get request to https://api.example.com slash data, which is a placeholder for the actual API URL you're interested in querying. The response object contains all the information returned by the API, including the status code, headers, and the actual data. By calling response.json, we parse the JSON response body and convert it into a Python dictionary, or list, depending on the JSON structure. Finally, we print this data to the console. This simple example demonstrates the basic process of fetching and handling data from an API in Python. Decorators and generators. Decorators are a very powerful and useful tool in Python since they allow you to modify the behavior of a function without changing its code. They decorate or wrap another function and let you execute code before and after the wrapped function runs. In this code, my decorator is a decorator that takes a function func as an argument and defines another function wrapper inside it. The wrapper function adds some functionality printing statements before and after calling the func. The at my decorator syntax before the say hello function applies the decorator meaning say hello is passed to my decorator, and then it's replaced with the wrapper function. When you call say hello, you're actually calling wrapper, which adds the before and after functionality to the simple say hello function call. Introduction to web frameworks, Flask Django. Web frameworks like Flask and Django simplify web development by providing tools and libraries that help in building robust web applications. Flask is a micro-framework that is best for small to medium web projects, offering flexibility and simplicity. Django, on the other hand, is a high-level framework optimized for rapid development and clean, pragmatic design, suitable for larger projects with its batteries-included approach. The given code snippet is a simple Flask application. Here's a breakdown of how it works. 1. Import the Flask class. 2. Create an instance of the Flask class. This instance acts as your web application. 3. Define a route slash, which means the root of your website. When this route is accessed, the function hello world is called. 4. The hello world function simply returns the string hello world, which is what the visitor will see when they visit your root URL. 5. Finally, if name co quote main ensures that the web application runs only if the script is executed directly and not imported. The app.run debug true starts the application with debug mode enabled, allowing you to see errors directly on the web page, which helps in development.